Um, so we're going to talk tonight about uh, Windows 10 and working around the desktop. We'll get familiar with that. Um, and then best practice, uh, practices for organizing our files. And we'll talk about cloud storage and flash drive. I will explain all that stuff as we go. Uh, we're going to talk about two different types of desktops, um, I like to say. I like a, a clean desktop. I mean, I know when I, if I go to work, you know, I work at you know, my desk, I walk in my office, everything's pretty much where it needs to be. Uh, if any of my employees came in someplace, you know, they needed something, I wasn't there, I could say, yep, it's underneath the monitor on the right side, and it's going to be there. All right? Um, so that's the way I like things. It helps me to be organized. Uh, it helps me to find things faster, and uh, it just overall helps my mental stability when I can get things right away. <laughs> so, same with our desktop here. So, you have a desktop where, you know, there's icons, um, there's a taskbar, and we're going to talk about what these different things mean, and then I'm going to go into a little bit of a demonstration on some of them as well. All right, so finding our way around, uh, let me go back one here. So when we talk about this the screen in the area, there's a couple different things that you have to be aware of. So when you're working with your mouse, moving things around, uh, you're probably aware there's two buttons in most mice. It's left and a right mouse button, uh, which do different things. Uh, the left mouse button is going to be your selection, uh, clicking and dragging. Uh, your right mouse button is going to be primarily for a contextual menu. So when you right click on something, it brings up a menu based on what you right-click on. And again, I will show you that here in a few minutes. Um, so again, down here, we have uh, our taskbar. Uh, we can pin things to the taskbar. We'll talk about that later, how to pin things to the taskbar. Um, we can uh, move the taskbar around. Uh, we have a system tray over here that will blow up here a little bit so you can see that better. And our start menu and our search, search menu down here. All right, so when you first open up Windows and besides that the screen that we saw just prior, uh, when you click on the Start menu button, you get something that looks like this. Uh, this is just one recently I took a screenshot of, and uh, it's showing me a couple things that I customized on here for myself. Some of it's generic. It will come up and just say, hey, here you go, here you go. you've got your email. Uh, these are all different what we call live tiles. So I can set these live tiles up to do different things. I can say, I want my calendar to be here. Uh, I want the weather forecast right in front of me. I want a picture, like all my different pictures to come up. And that will actually rotate through different pictures. Uh, and more than just showing it to me, I can click on those and it will open up into that actual area. So if I wanted to see the full weather forecast, I would click on there and it would just go right into that forecast app for me right off the bat. If I wanted to see my calendar in a more exploded view, I can click on that and it will do the same thing. Same with all the other icons. Sometimes it will suggest um, icons to be put on your screen based on how many times you go to the taskbar uh, or go to your menu. If I, for example, I'm constantly going to access or I'm going to Adobe uh, creative cloud and I'm just constantly picking at it there, it may come up and automatically place it up here and say, you know what, you do that so much, why don't you just put it here? I'm like, thank you, Windows, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know, and just say, whoop, there you go, okay. Um, so again, it tries to, here's what, what they call life at a glance. Um, you can edit these, and if we have time uh, going into probably next week, as far as that's, we can do this, I will show you how to group these. Uh, and make these more usable. Okay. Uh, let's see, all these on this side here, again, this is your most used, and then you have your alphabetized list of all the different apps. So this is going to be the overview, and then we'll go and actively work on these things. All right, this is kind of a cut of the bottom part of the screen. This is what we would call the taskbar. All right, the taskbar is going to have a couple things on it that are very important. One is pin applications. So when you get Windows out of the box, it doesn't have a lot down there. Uh, I may have Windows Edge. <laughs> I just noticed I had old IE 11 on here. That's kind of ancient. My bad. <laughs> so 
uh, Outlook, a couple things, but most of the times it's going to be available for me to just kind of shortcut things to. We call that pinning. Kind of like I'm just going to pin that right there. Uh, on the way far side, this is what we call our system system tray. All right, and that's going to have your date, your time, uh, and something else that is very important is going to be your communications error, your message center. All right, and when you get those little pop up boxes that say, you know, um, time for an upgrade, or you know, installing so and so, or Windows Defender found no viruses. Yay! Thank you. Uh, that's all coming out of your little communications tab. You can click on that, and that will pop up and show you all the different history of things that you probably ignored, uh, kind of like the oil light on my car. <laughs> so uh, it will show. But you can cancel all those. I'll show you again. We'll go through that as well. Um, we'll so I have your sound settings on here. So it has. Well, right now I have the X on it. So that means that it's muted. I have no sound coming out of there. Uh, if I was unmuted, you would see the little bars that show up, and I can change my volume as I need to. This little broadcast symbol there, anybody know what that's probably for? Internet, Wi-Fi? Yep, Wi-Fi. Uh, if I was connected to a wire, to an actual cable, it would look like a globe, like a, like a computer would be there, kind of doing its thing. Right. Uh, looks like it's currently plugged in. That's my little battery indicator. If it was, you know, getting short on time, you know, you'd start to see it getting a little, the little bar would start getting short. Usually around 20%, it starts saying, hey, uh, I'm going to go to sleep soon. You better plug me in. Uh, it gets down to 10%. Those messages get a little more frequent. Hey, uh, really tired. It's going to go dead here soon. You better start saving things. Um, and you're like friendly finding a plug before you, everything gets lost. Uh, then you have this little carrot symbol right here that will just bring up additional features and things you may want to look at. Oh, another thing too is um, you see these little boxes up here. Again, I'm going to preview this for you. Uh, these are little thumbnail previews. So if I have an app open down here in my taskbar and I hover over top of it, it'll bring up what's currently available in that specific open app. And you can tell it's open because when you look at it, we'll have a little blue underline saying that it's active. I don't know if it shows too well on your paper, uh, but it will show the blue, you know it's open, and then it will give you a little preview of what these look like. Okay, so this is, if I click on, going back here, and I, that little uh, message center that I showed you earlier, if I click on that, it does also bring up an additional settings menu. So I can go in here, these are a bunch of different shortcuts that I can turn on my focus assistance, which again, that's a different course. Uh, my nightlight. Uh, nightlights, I like the nightlight feature. Has anybody ever seen that or used it? Okay. So the night, night feature is you can set a schedule uh, either on the laptop for Windows or on a desktop or however you want it that at a certain schedule, let's say 8 o'clock at night, the screen will start to turn a different hue. Like it will go from a bright intense down to like maybe a softer yellow. And again, it will start transitioning from that whatever, let's just say 8 o'clock. Because that's usually, I'm starting to wind down for bed. I don't want all that blue light hitting me. Uh, and when I see that start coming up, I'm like, okay, it's 8 o'clock. I better start winding down. So it just starts to really rest your eyes a little more. Um, and again, you can change that setting however you want. I love that feature because again, A, it tells me, Steve, you work, you've got to go to bed now. And it helps me, it doesn't just, uh, it takes that screen brightness and just kind of starts toning it down for me. All right, there are other things, let's see, uh, connection tools, we won't get into the screen snips, VPN, and then all settings takes you into the fully, full version of all the different settings that you could use on your computer. All right, so before we go into this section here, I'm going to take a quick break, and I am going to change into demo mode. Uh, so I want to make sure I do this without totally interrupting. There we go. 
example, this is a great tool right here. So let weather access your precise location. So this is going back to the uh, location metrics I talked about earlier. Some folks are okay with it, um, and some folks maybe not. You can change this setting um, in, the, in the features of Windows, whether or not you want it to be able to detect your location. All right. If not, that's okay, because what you can do just manually, if you say, you know what, I don't want Windows to know where I'm at, I don't, I mean, I've got this huge privacy thing going on, that's okay. Everybody's got something different. Then all I would have to do is type the zip code in or the city and state of where I'm at. And then it would find me. So same thing with your phone. So uh, we get into that in, in two more weeks. Um, you know, you can turn off that geolocation so it doesn't know. So you can tell it where I only want to, you to tell me my location when I've got the app opened up. Or never. I want to be in charge of putting in my zip code of where I'm at currently today to get the weather or a map or something like that. Where, that. where that ends up hurting you in a way is if you do have a GPS need and you want to go somewhere, you know, the GPS does depend on your, your position pretty much exactly. So if you don't let them to know where they really can't tell? You know, and again... I, mean, I really wonder about that. Basically. You know, oh, that's a different story for another day. Know, uh, I would love know. to have that conversation. Um, tell you what, next week when we get into that, I will show you an area in your phone okay. that you can go that will tell you every place you have been in the last two weeks. So if it's on my phone, then they know it. Depends on who they is. Well, not <laughs> well your phone has a GPS. See, there's, there's, yeah. see, now here's where there's good and bad to that. So from the positive perspective, I just read of a case of a... Uh, of, car accident, a wreck. Actually, this person had a heart attack. They were on the phone with their best friend miles away. Um, they found the person that was in the accident based on the last position of their phone. Um, so in those cases, those are great. Uh, they have used geolocation to find missing kids, missing seniors, uh, criminals, I mean, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, 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 go to, I tend to go to the premise of I have nothing to hide. Exactly. You know, um, there are some good things to it, and there are some not good things to it. So I guess it depends on what side you want to be on. Uh, but I, I take, I want to say, like, cautious prevention. Like, I'm not too far over the edge where it's, like, detrimental. Um, and then I don't go too far the other way where I'm just like throwing everything out there, you know. So there's, there's got to be a middle ground as far as you go. Uh, I know with our kids, we're a lot more stricter because of social media, uh, because of those dangers, but we'll do that in cybersecurity next week. Okay. okay. Great. Great lead-in. All right, I'm going to say no to that one, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, a uh, couple other features here. Down here, we talked about pinning, doing a pin to the table. All these icons I have down at the bottom, I pinned at one point or the other. Um, if there's an app that I say, you know, um, I have been using my calculator a lot recently, I can right click on that. There's that menu again. And I can tell I want to pin it to the start menu, which is what I'm currently in now. Um, and I can say, you know what, just go ahead and do that. And then I should place it. Well, actually, you know what, I did it right up here now. So now I have control of this. For some reason, it wouldn't let me pin it to, this, to uh, the panel over here. But if I go down to something like Excel, and I right-click on it, I have, I have some more options. I can pin it down here to the bottom. I could. Uh, I should be able you to. You can't drag it right from here. It turns it. It turns it into a link, actually. So yeah, it does. It that, that I think they just needs to go. So now it's down here. Right. Yeah. So pretty much anything is drag and drop. There are very few things anymore that you can drag and drop. Uh, and you got to be careful doing that, especially when you get into the file management. I can drop something that is totally like, oh my gosh, what did I do with it? It's not there anymore, you know, and go with that. So anyway, 
All right, I'm going to go to, okay, there's my settings tab, settings button I had on there. And let me see, there's a display. Where is that area I saw? Is that what that is? I could not, for the life of me, when we were in Greg's class, I feel like, what is that noise? There it is. If we can't find anything, just search for it. Here's this nightlight setting. I figured while we're in the way, I'll show it to you. And uh, so what this will do is I can turn this on and notice how it's dimming. You can see it more on here, but I can hit it again. Okay, so it just changes the hue enough. So what I can say is, you know what, I want to schedule that. Here it says sunset to sunrise. How does it know that? It's based on the weather app. It's based on my location. It knows exactly when that sun's coming up. I don't know that. So it's saying sunset to sunrise. Uh, or I can say just set hours that I tell it to. But you know what, sunset sunrise sounds good. Um, but it won't start kidding, it won't go into that mode uh, for another, you know, hour or so. Or I could just say, hey, I want you to turn on at, well, let's say this, let's say 7.30 p.m., which is only a couple minutes away. And I want you to turn off at 7 o'clock p.m. So it will turn itself on at 7 p.m. or 7.30, which we'll see here in a little bit, um, and turn off. So I got that schedule turned on. You can change the strength. Whoa, that's, that's, what was that? Did you see that? Uh, it was me or the cable or something there. I poked something. I poked the bear. All right, I'm going to go there and see what happens in the next nine minutes. All right, so let's move on. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. That's a couple more things we want to talk about. Okay. Uh, let's talk about file management. What did I do with my little clicker? There we go. All right, we'll talk about file management. Uh, this is an area that I get a lot of like, whoa, really? I should be doing that? And it's like, yeah, I'll show you what the good and bad results are here in a minute. Uh, when I talk about file management, um, you know, all the things that we download, all the things that we get, we keep, uh, we pack right away into our computers. Uh, we never want to get rid of, kind of like the stuff in my garage, <laughs> until I'm forced to get rid of it. Um, because our, our computers and our mobile devices, they aren't infinite. They're finite. They have a set amount of storage. Um, they have a set amount of storage that is... Uh, convenient for us and convenient for this operating system uh, because let's say I have we'll just use an arbitrary number 100 gigabytes all right so if you look at different products different devices you know they're measured in gigabytes megabytes all these kind of things so if I have 100 gigabytes of storage um, I don't want to use all that for me because the operating system needs it you know Windows needs it Mac OS needs it. Apple iOS needs it for the phone. So as I keep porting things and files and things that I've had from, you know, 1990 or whatever, you know, that that stuff's there. It's taking storage. Just because it's digital, you know, it, it, it does have digital mass to it. All right. So it's something that's taking up space on the physical hard drive. So as that fills up, it will slow down your computer because the operating system needs a little bit of that hard drive in there to do its thing, to think and to process and you know do its different uh, number crunches that it needs to do. And when that fills up, uh, you'll start noticing your computer getting a lot slower. Um, so what I recommend is uh, Windows does a very good job of giving you the tools already to manage 
your files. All right, they call them a library. Um, so if you think of your computer as a library, uh, it has, um, you know, think different filing cabinets, where when I go into a library, uh, I see different bookcases. I have the nonfiction section, the fiction section, the uh, geography, history, all these different things. Same thing with cabinets. I can name these cabinets whatever I want, pretty much. Uh, each cabinets, they have smaller drawers. Those drawers may be something specifically to you. Uh, for example, in a, in a library, I go to nonfiction. I may look up um, president biographies or, you know, uh, you know, history of World War II. Those kind of things that are separate categories, but still under the genre of nonfiction. Um, maybe in those six areas, I may be looking up something even smaller, like, you know, General McCarthy, or, you know, Walter Cronkite, or just different people that have different biographies. Same thing, again, with our file systems, so you can add folders and do different things that, again, aren't paper, they're digital. But so you would save them? Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, okay, but if you don't save them, it's not a problem. Right, yeah, if you're not, if it's a, a file that you're never going to use again, you're yeah. going to delete it, then, okay. yeah, right. Yeah. But as we're on the internet, and we're downloading things, and we're, we're surfing the internet, we're constantly streaming new data to the computer, whether we know it or not, uh, in the form of different files, like you heard the cookies, yes. uh, it's a big term, that people know what cookies are, uh, little tracker pieces that are in there, some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Um, so anyway, how do we manage all the stuff that we know that we have? What the stuff that was it's in our area to manage? So for example, if I have documents, music, videos, pictures, we have a ton of pictures. Do we not? Do we not like photograph everything? And nobody ever can Right. I, the only way I know there's things on my phone is because Facebook or Windows will come up and say, "Hey, here's a memory from seven years ago." Thank you. You know, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, downloads, uh, files that get downloaded from the internet. Um, these are temporary, but in most cases, it's, you know, they're stored, uh, you know, on your hard drive. So, Windows has an area already set up to put these things in. Uh, for the most part, what I do, I keep a lot of things in my documents folder. Um, I have a few things that I do for downloads, uh, but if I'm done with them, I'll delete them if I don't need them anymore. Uh, music, I don't have so much, so I don't have a lot in that area, but pictures, I keep a lot of pictures. I have historical pictures, even things that I've scanned in, like regular photographs uh, that I've taken and had scanned in. I have folders for those from back in you know, 70s and 80s, so they're, they're all on a file on a folder somewhere. Uh, videos, I do a lot with videos, so I have that all broken up. Um, so a couple things uh, we want to talk about is, again, storing those things, those items in the right spaces. Um, and not installing programs, uh, it's like, so if we're saying installing a program, uh, something, I, uh, something new, a game I download off the internet, um, when you do your installations and you go through that little click next here to install, that's already set up to do a job. It already knows the file system it's going to set up, where it's going to point everything to. I tend not to mess with that. Now, there are some people who like to change the path of where they want it to install, and that's if they're savvy enough to do that, then that's cool. That then they can do that. I tend not to do that. I let it do its thing uh, and keep it out of the documents folder. Okay? Uh, when you're installing programs, again, leave that says there, leave it in the same default location and store things in their proper space. And there's a purpose why we do that. Um, and I, I used to tell people um, there's, a, there's a folder called My Documents. Uh, it used to be around for older versions of Windows. Not so much anymore because they have everything listed in libraries. I do that for the organizational um, idea that if I need something, I want to know where to go right away. Just like anything, like you know, a tool that I need in my workshop. Um, you know, a, a, um, if I'm looking at a recipe and I need it at this spice or this piece of whatever out of the kitchen, I want to know exactly where to go for it. Uh, same with 
the files and storage that I'm going to be looking at here. So if you have a moment in the area, if something was to happen to your computer and you had a very good backup of all those individual locations, restoring them is a piece of cake. Because if your hard drive goes down and you've got all those where they need to be organized and you've kept them backed up, because now if I have, if I know that everything that I need for life and godliness is stored right here in my documents folder, and I've been very faithful about putting it on a flash drive like this, and I'm on vacation and it gets stolen, I've got everything I need for life and godliness right here besides the word of God. <laughs> all right? So it's right here. Um, same with my downloads, music, and all that. So I go to the store and say, hey, you know what? I just have my laptop stolen. I don't know if I'd be that calm about it. If I follow the police report first, uh, buy a new laptop, take everything from here, put it on the new computer, I'm back in business. So you back up everything that you say? How often do you back up your computer? Uh, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Okay. Any chance I get. <laughs> okay. Actively. <laughs> So when we get into the file management structure, um, this is a big one-page blurb, and you have it too on your page. Hopefully, it's readable on that. I try to do it in color so it comes out a little better. Um, there's a lot of activity going on here, and I want to kind of explain what this is about. This navigation is is about eighty percent of it. Knowing where you want to navigate to. Is, is the other 20. Oh, and I'm starting to click into, see it? It's starting to dim. Yep, and it's starting to dim. <laughs> That's a night-night mode call telling me it's time for time to bed soon. Um, so, um, yeah, when I, when I want to put my files in the right location, I got to know how to get to them. Um, so a couple things here I'm going to do. I'm going to turn, that's getting run, really kind of dark mode now, so I'm going to go in here. Turn. There we go. It's getting really dark now. All right, turn you off. There we go. Back to normal. Well, I was getting really dim. I was like, okay, it's not that not that late, is it? All right. So you can see how far that went. All right, so with the file explorer mode, um, we have a couple things going on here. I'm going to start at the top with the tabs and the ribbons. All right, all the Microsoft products that we've seen now since 2020, and I think was it before that, maybe it been a little bit before that, they started coming out with what they call as the, the task ribbons. All right, so each menu as a ribbon. It used to be when you would click on a file file menu, it would, the whole thing would drop down and it would cover up everything you're trying to work on, right? So that somebody said, hey, it'd be great if we just put it across the top, you know, and you just switch to different ribbon. God, yeah, it's a great idea. So that's what they did. So everything in your home menu, again, it would take us forever to go through every one of these buttons. So we're going to just talk about the high level ones that we need to know uh, the share menu, the view menu. Uh, again, that's we're going to transition. I will show you that here in a bit. Uh, but speaking of transitions, wow, it is getting late. Um, quick access menu. Uh, here's our quick access for all the different folders we talked about before. All right. Uh, frequent folders, the ones that you use most often, are going to be up here. Uh, the search bar. This is great because I, if I do lose a file, not lose it like somewhere it's gone forever, but in my head, oh wait, where did I put that thing? Uh, in my documents, well, it was a video, but, you know, so I can go in here, and I can kind of bring up, type in kind of what I think it may be, um, and then I can quickly bring it up and say, okay, yep, I get it. Not only will it show me the file, um, it will show me where it's located, all right? She got it. Good. <laughs> if that's important, you need to take that. We'll all listen. <laughs> I mean, it's all recorded anyway. So I know. 
All right. Um, so you can find the file uh, and to find its location. And there may be other versions of that file out there yet you didn't know about. You know, I'm bad. I am bad about this. I will create a file and I will edit it and then name it something different and then put it something else that I didn't rename. And I have like five files of the same content. I'm like, oh my goodness. Are you thinking that this is the original version? And then if you upload I do, it, yeah. That, yeah. I've been better problem. about it. I um, used to do that too. And what's really helped me is um, the hospital we work at, we have obviously we use Microsoft tools. Uh, they have what's called versioning. So you can go back and find yes. the latest version. Of, you, know, you know, what was it? What did that file look like on Monday? you know, versus today, you know, you can go find different things like that. Um, on the bottom here, I, it says recent files used. What I don't have showing right now is, uh, would be attached storage or, um, and I'll show you this here in a bit, local storage that um, is physically plugged in. So a system, a different storage device on your menu. Um, if I plug in a, um, an external hard drive, it's going to show up as a different drive area here for you as well. So, oh, there you are. So, uh, which style are you? <laughs> I, I like this one. I, I know, a lot of people say they're this one here. Uh, I mean, I, I love the palm trees. <coughs> if I could see them through all my icons, right? Um, but no, I, I used to be this person here. I no longer am that. I, I try to do more of this than anything. <laughs> that just that just makes my OCD go whoa. So the top guy can do everything this way. <coughs> sure can. Probably faster too. But the thing is, though, you're it's it's kind of coded. You're the only person who knows where your stuff's at, though. If it's in if it's organized. One thing I guess I have on there too. I mean, I don't know what that is. That's crazy. Everything I ever thought I'd that, that's my brain. That's my brain on a Friday, right there. <laughs> this, this is Monday. This is Friday. <laughs> All right. I think we're gonna have enough time to talk through this. I don't know if we're gonna get the emails today. Uh, we may have to put a fifth week on. So <laughs> then we're coming to vacation time. Um, all right, let's talk about that whole backup thing we talked about. So um, with some tips and tricks, uh, backing up is not as hard as it used to be. Uh, it's, it's less physical devices and more virtual. Um, so why would we want to back up our drive? Why would we want to back up anything? Well, you know, it's the, thing, the reason we have insurance, you know, just in case, right? It's, it's you know... Something happens, and I've got all my my ten years of taxes on that laptop. It happens. I mean, we had, I, I had I remember a couple of years ago. Um, not it was more of more pictures. Um, we had a, a team member at, at the hospital I worked at where she kept I mean years of photos on this laptop. I mean years, no backup on a on a company laptop. And it got, it died. The laptop was dead. The hard drive was dead. All those photos of her kids were gone. And with tears, I, I mean, I felt so bad. Like, well, we kind of have a policy that you know. Now I'm gonna, the lady said, I'm not gonna say, you know, well, yeah, yeah, I should have known. Uh, that would have been adding a lot of fuel to that fire. Uh, but I mean, we physically tried. We did every. We took the drive out, we attached it to some devices that we have that would read it, uh, put it on a different system, try to read it, we could not find anything on it. It was, it was the option that there are, there's $5,000 you could put and send it to some place like Iron Mountain or these data recovery people, I know people have done it. that, yeah, yeah that they can want, especially families that don't pay to get right. that. I think, if I'm not mistaken with State Farm. We're with State Farm and uh, there's insurance, you, there's digital insurance you can get that will pay for the cost of recovery of digital files. Now it's a it's a rider form so you have to you know it's an addendum to your insurance 
But it's one of those things again where if that was to happen and this was like classic whatever valuable information and the only way I could get it back was to, you know, write a big check, then I could do it. For, for example, at this church about 15 years ago, the database lived on a server in, in the data center. And on the first day of the counseling conference, everybody relies on that database. It had a great one system where they were moved back and forth on two different drives. One drive crashed and the other drive couldn't be read. And they paid three thousand back right. then three thousand dollars and they got it all back. But it was worth it. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So again, preparing for the uh, things we can prepare for, uh, obviously fire in the house, virus. Um, I've seen laptops like this. <laughs> I, I have seen laptops like this. Um, burned, um, burned, charred up, those kind of things. Sledgehammer, right? Um, acts of violence. Um, I've seen really bad things at a hospital that you would be surprised. Yeah. Uh, coming from the ED and those places, it's, it's incredible. Um, so data loss, hardware failure, malware attack, which again is a big thing going on again. Um, data overwriting, um, I accidentally overwrit on top of a file that I needed and I saved it and like afterwards you're like, oh my goodness, I saved it over top of it. It's kind of the same thing that we used to do when it was a VHS tape. You know, I did this once, I never forgot it. So, forgive me mom. Days of our lives was a thing. It was a thing. It was a thing. One o'clock every day of the week, it was there. I needed a VH tape, VHS tape very badly to do something I needed to do. Grabbed one of those tapes, stuffed it in the VHS, did my little recording because that show I wanted to watch was coming on. 3.30, my mom comes home. She wants to watch Days of Our Life from that day. Days of Our Lives wasn't happening that day. That's to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 13, 14 year old Steve wrote over something that probably a Saturday morning cartoon thing. I have no idea what it was. But anyway, it happened, and same thing with data files. We can overwrite them by accident, and uh, things like that happen. Uh, acts of God, uh, natural disaster, fire, tornadoes, and those things we don't like to think about. So, what are some options uh, to back up? Well, physically, we can back up on the hard drives. CDs, DVDs really aren't a thing much anymore. Uh, USBs are kind of going out of the way. Uh, external hard drives are still kind of a thing. Um, I know you can still purchase uh, external storage, which is fairly cheap. You can get like a 500 gig hard drive that kind of plugs right in the side, uh, like 60 bucks. I mean, but <laughs> I picked this up, no lie. This is a terabyte of data. There's a terabyte on here. Um, I got this on Amazon because I was just looking for something to put all my videos on. And this popped up. I'm like, okay, I'll try it out. What can I, you know? Um, terabyte of data works great. Uh, what I like about it is it's got USB. Um, is it three? Yep, USB three. USB C. And, and, and I don't break it here. It's got the USB. Like no, no, <laughs> no. It's got a taser. No. <laughs> it's got the that micro USB oh, wow. for Android. I was like thirty six bucks. Uh huh. Amazing. Uh huh. And I'm like, yeah, you're coming home. You can't use that on a Mac. Yes, you could. Absolutely could. I'd have to format it for a Mac because okay. the file systems between Macs and PCs are a little different. Okay. But this will work on a Mac. Plug it into your Mac Plug. and allow Mac to save you a format. Right. I even tested it on our Xbox. Oh. So I can plug this into the USB port of my Xbox at home, and I can download more games. <laughs> it is a bit, especially when one game is like. 100 gigabytes. So this, I was very happy. I, I plan on writing a review on Amazon and letting them know that is a thing. I love it. What's that? 
Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have an app that can show you what the trend prices are in different things, but it's stayed between 48 and 36 bucks. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I was, I was very pleased with that. All right. So where we're kind of at now is this cloud storage thing. Uh, cloud storage uh, kind of started several years ago. Um, and it's one of those, it's always available. It's always available. And you can have, you can buy different versions of it, different sizes of it. Um, you can install um, little applets that sit on your computer and will just actively back things up. So, for example, I'm going to give you an example here later of the one I like, which is OneDrive. Um, we'll talk about some other different versions, but uh, they're always up to date. They're always going to be doing something. But they're, when I say always, it's always when something changes. Mm -hmm. So if I have a folder structure set up where I just want to back up a group of folders and that's it. Nothing, I don't want you to see anything else on my hard drive. I'm just telling you that this, 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 anytime something changes, send it to the cloud. It will set itself up once and it will run all by itself as long as that computer is turned on. Uh, and it's connected to the internet. Now the good thing about it is, if it's not connected to the internet and I'm making file changes, um, and I'm, let's say I'm updating this PowerPoint and I wasn't connected for an hour, I made some changes. Well, bad news is if something happens between that hour and the time I reconnect, I could lose data. But as soon as I do connect, it's gonna reach out, it's gonna say, oh, there's a file I need to update, and it's gonna pull it up to the cloud. <laughs> so, what is the cloud precisely? Um, so when you think of the cloud uh, in, a, in a sense of backups, it's, it's just a group of computers. It's a group of servers, masses of storage owned by a company, an outside company. So basically it's taking, I'm paying for somebody or I'm paying or I'm getting a, the free version, uh, which usually comes with you know, different fringes. Um, to take my data and send it up to somebody else's server that I'm entrusting them. <laughs> I'm putting my faith in their servers to keep my stuff for, for me when I need it. Private. And private. Private depending on who you use. Because there are some that aren't so private. Yeah. And I, I think it's fine if it's free. One drive fine if it's free. Mm -hmm. But anything on it's and it's cheap. Right. That sounds about right. Now, see, I'm paranoid enough to where I have a OneDrive subscription that I get five copies of, of Office that it is uh, Once a month, I have an external hard drive. I copy it all back down on the hard drive because I'm that paranoid. I mean, right. Chances are nothing's ever going to happen, but what if a problem goes Yeah, and what if it does? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, that's, 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 that's just me. Is that stack up? Is that overwrite? It will append it. It will what we call append it. So it will add anything new that's changed since the last backup. So it essentially it does, but it doesn't do a full blown full copy back and forth. That would take an immense amount of upload and download time. That would be ridiculous. So uh, usually they do require a monthly fee. It requires access to the internet. They may have some limitations. Um, and sometimes it could take a while to restore all the files. Um, but the nice thing about it being on the cloud, a lot of things I have up there are archives. They're just things that I probably won't ever use on my physical computer, but I want to make sure they're there in case I need them. Uh, we had a scenario, I don't know, a couple weeks ago where I needed to pull a file down for my kids. I was down in Georgia. Uh, they needed to know where it was, so instead of me just Say, okay, well, if you go to this file, go here, to here, I brought it up on my OneDrive, right, my phone, because before I left work, before I left Pennsylvania, see, here in Indiana, whoo, I uploaded everything, so I knew exactly where it was, I could find it and quick send it to them, and it was that quick. So, yeah. OneDrive does work on that. Too. Yes, it does. So, when you get full, it's a Microsoft file. You, you, I try to manage my space. So 
um, since I do a lot of photo work and stuff, there's things where, you know what, I, I'm going to be the cheapskate. I don't want to have to, because, I mean, I'm at 299, so I have two terabytes of cloud storage. Uh, and that can, I, that's shared with my family. So, you know, we all can upload to it. Uh, Caleb does a lot of video work, so he's got some stuff on there. My wife's got homeschool materials, we've got church materials, all kinds of stuff that we do. Um, so we try to keep it under that. When I see it starting to get close, it's time to purge. <laughs> so I'll go through, I'll look for duplicate um, you know, files, or I'll look for pictures that are just, you know, things I took on my phone that somehow got uploaded accidentally. And I was like, oh, why did I put that meme out there? That's dumb. I mean, that's taking up space. You know, so I'll just start wiping all that stuff off. All right. Uh, some, these are basic, the big three, I would call them, is Google, uh, Google Drive, iCloud, um, and I think it's, I think free is up to 500 gigs, is what you get. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, well, I think what, yeah, and it depends on, like, if you set up an account, you do different things, refer a friend, you get additional storage and stuff. I tend to really, um, go with OneDrive, because if you can have a OneDrive account, um, free, what I like about it is that they don't do data, they don't data mine you. Uh, Google is a big data miner, uh, which what means they can miner? they can use your content sometimes without you knowing it. All right, um, they can, uh, depending on their what they call their uh, end user license agreement, EULA, uh, the forty three pages of things we don't read, <laughs> uh, they could have rights and you wouldn't know it. So Microsoft is one of the only ones that I'm aware of that doesn't mine your data. They don't look, they don't, and again, not that somebody individually is doing this, but algorithm. We hear the term algorithms all the time now. And AI and things like that could say, you know, they might want to do a deep sweep of, you know, everything that, I don't know, let's say, who knows, I don't, some kind of file. Um, and they would be okay doing that if it's part of their license agreement for you having access to the system. So they can take a photo of them? Google has been known to actually do that. Google will take files, um, and my daughter, who is an artist, recently had this about a year or two ago. Um, she was uploading things to the Google Drive and found one of her art pieces of digital artwork that was licensed to someone else because somebody took it and used it without her permission because Google somehow took it out of her drive. It was still in her drive, but they have somehow used it, published it, and she no longer had rights to it. Another thing with OneDrive is that this church uses OneDrive, and they, I have to say this carefully, politically today, they won't take LGBT stuff, the churches, you know, yeah, stuff gotcha. and things like that. They don't care what you put out there. Um, Google will. Um, because there was a big decision on which way they wanted to go way back then. And so because they don't persecute religious people or, you know, about anti-political or not trendy and things like that, they don't care what you put out there. Google does. So I can just upload them on my Mac? You can. You be careful though because your Mac is a is a Mac OS product yes. and it iCloud is written for your Mac, even though OneDrive does work very well. Right. So it's a decision you you would want to make. Okay. Uh, which one's cheaper? Which one's better right. for you to use? Things like that. Okay. Okay. So a couple of items here. Um, this is an example of iCloud. I'm sorry, not iCloud. This is um, uh, OneDrive. Um, so in OneDrive, you have an installation that you can do. You can download an app from OneDrive's website from Microsoft and installs a plugin to your computer. And it acts as another drive on your computer. So I can save things, uh, add, remove, delete things from these folders uh, that I have given OneDrive permission to upload and de download and do backups on. Um, if I, once I'm connected, you know, if I'm like I am now, anything I update goes up to the cloud and synchronizes with all my other devices. 
So if I was to say I'm going to go in and change something in you know my YouTube folder or homeschool folder, uh, within seconds it will be available on my other devices no matter where they're at. Because I have one drive on the device. Yep. So I have a question then. Mm -hmm. Should I uninstall Google on my Mac and just go to Safari? Is that the same way? I would be cautious well, on Google, that. Yeah. I mean, Google, what, what browser is not the same as Google? Is not. If you have right. Google Chrome on your computer, that's fine. That's a web browser. Okay. We're talking about the storage Google called Google Drive. Yeah. No, okay. yeah. yeah. You're not using that it usually. Okay. That's that's I'm glad say. I asked. Yeah. You know, so something else OneDrive does is fairly new. Is it synchronized? He talked about the documents and pictures and desktop, it will, it, it has a fairly new feature that you can tell it to do desktop documents and pictures. Right. Anything on your local hard drive will automatically get thrown up to the uh, lightning folder and run that. So right. Chris, if Chris lives off his desktop, all those folders and files will get up on there. Right. And then we can access them anywhere. Anywhere. Anyway. Right. We could go to a cafe and run we just did that earlier this week. My, my daughter had a uh, science fair project to do. Um, called up Roswell Library and said, hey, can we get color copies done there? Said, get 25 cents, come get, get your color copies done. Um, so I thought, you know what? I started thinking, well, I'll just control on a flash drive. Now we'll see the flash drive in. Um, but we still had everything on the cloud. So, so I had a little folder in there called Rose Rosie's Project, boom. Um, so I took my flash drive, the new one I just had, and uh, went to plug it into their copier, uh, which they had a USB. Typically, I would plug it in, and it would just show me my pictures. Yep, boop, boop, boop. It's too old. Their copier was too old. It didn't, it didn't accept the terabyte. So I quickly said, hey, asked the lady, hey, can I get in this computer? So, yep, I logged into my OneDrive right there, and pulled up the files, print, print, print. We were done and out of there in no time. Just make sure, too, when you're using, this goes to my cybersecurity part, um, anything you use publicly, always make sure that you're logged out and none of that stuff is stored. Which I love the libraries because they do that automatically. Um, nothing is stored on those. They actually go over, they have to hit a button or whatever they do. Boom, the session comes up. Um, I put my stuff in. I still kind of really make sure that there's nothing in there. The blank screens are blank. I do a little flush. Boom, we're done. And then they turn it off. So I don't like anything sitting out there that doesn't need to be. So anyway, yeah, these are all synced up, and then this is a picture a screenshot on my phone. Uh, these are a little different than that because I don't have, this is a full-blown picture of part of my, my uh, cloud online. This is only part of it that I tell, I tell the computer, that's all I want you to do, nothing else. Because even though you're backing this stuff up, it's still kept locally on your drive. It's still taking up space on your drive. So we had a situation one time where um, one of the pictures folders that I thought was no longer backing up somehow got reactivated. And it was backing, it was flushing all this stuff up to my OneDrive from an old phone I had turned on. And my computer upstairs in my office I'm like, why am I getting messages that my R drive is full? And I'm like, this is crazy. You know, so I didn't realize, so I had to go back. And when I saw it, I'm like, Oh my word, there's like 700 megabytes, 700 gigabytes of, of things dropping onto my desktop. I'm like, I don't want this. So I had to go in quick. I had to pause the download, tell it that I don't want this folder, and boom, all of a sudden, 700 gigs was freaked back up again. I'm like, what did that happen? You know. So anyway, it's just where when you have a family and things, everybody has a device nowadays, and things get turned on and turned off, you know, you've got to be aware of, that it's just one of those extra things you got to be aware of. Do you have an iPhone? Yes. Okay, so another good thing about OneDrive is that you can download it on your iPhone. Okay. Even though you have a Mac. Okay. Uh, or PC, it doesn't matter. You can still see your files and folders on your iPhone. Oh, okay. And it'll sync back and forth. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Yep. Because I mean, OneDrive is is what you would say device agnostic. It doesn't really care what. Mac or PC or whatever, it, it just knows how to get the files to the right locations. And the app for your phone is going to be different than the same app for the PC 
support Android, all that. But it's still going to be the same file structure, just coming down to the different things, different but devices. That's good to know, because we're pretty much all Apple products. Right. So. I have a sister that goes that way, and we, we get each other a little bit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because the Microsoft is always updated. Right. You are updating the Windows, and then you have all these hackers with, with Mac. You just don't right. experience that at all. No, you're right. Um, just a quick thing before we wrap up. Um, one of my last classes had a, a, a lady here. Uh, her and her husband did a lot of camping. And they used their cloud. So when they would find camping spots, uh, they would make sure they had Wi Fi. I mean, you know, I tried not to. <laughs> but I mean, but they may go camp for, for a week. So they have to keep track of things as they're going, bills and things. So, but, you know, their one drive, they lived by it. I mean, because there was files on there that they needed, or whether it was, you know, coupons or you know, the next registration, the map of where they're going to. So that was, that's nice to be able to do that. So. So anyway, that's our wrap up tonight. Didn't get into internet. I figured we wouldn't, um, but we will work on that next week. In the meantime, if you please want to email me some questions uh, or anything like that, do that, and then uh, we will try. We will make time. I need to make time next week for more Q and A. Uh, okay. It just goes so fast. Ninety minutes just comes and goes, yeah. and my plan always gets thwarted. But it's always the interesting. I, I'm pretty familiar with what you presented to me because of my job. Right. So it was a big pleasure. Good. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off the live stream Thank here, you. and uh, we'll hopefully see you all back for next week, too. Um, week two, and we'll start going through the additional content we missed. And I will do my best to have some of this edited and out on the internet, uh, out on YouTube before next week. That's my goal. All right. Thanks. All right. Thank you all. Good night. Good night.